Um, so uh, with all this discussion of uh, TNA, um, it got me thinking about their future. We've been talking about um, you know them being basically over and hanging it up and, and being terrible for a very long time. And, and for the longest time, I just assumed, you know, okay, well, once Spike TV or, or, or Destination America or whoever, whenever they drop them, then that's it. Then no more TNA, period. But it occurred to me recently that that might not have to be the end of the promotion. Sure, they wouldn't have TV, um, and it would be a, a problem for them, but they can always just be an indie wrestling promotion. They don't have to be on television. They can just go around the country and, and have their have their shows, or they can just stay in Florida and have their shows and have their local company and just scale way down uh, as a company. So my question uh, to you, my, my big question is, uh, is that possible? Is the brand so tainted that even a local, small, indie-style show would suffer by being associated with TNA? Or um, do you think that they would do well without television? Mm -hmm. Basically, the question is this. Does TNA have a future without television? Doesn't Global Force Wrestling kind of answer the question? Same thing, sir. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, maybe that's a test run. Um, I'm working on my answer. Does anybody have anything uh, ready to roll? Um, uh, Mr. Indie Wrestling, yes. Eamon Payton, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling, what do you think? <laughs> there, I think there would still be a promotion. You know, I... It, it, I would, you know, we would say, oh, they're scaled down necessarily, and and yeah, they would, they would lose them. Like I know they've got a good relationship with like UK markets and stuff like that. But like other than that, I don't feel like they like their attendances aren't huge. There, you, you know, I I just feel like they wouldn't lose a lot necessarily. I think if they get canned by Destination America, they're still going to be kicking and screaming and and doing something you know maybe it'll be on the internet maybe it'll be whatever but it'll still be around you know but i think it's at point, if this happened if you asked me this three years ago i would say no i like like that that would be it but now like they've they've all they've scaled down their production so much to the point where i mean they can do whatever they want i feel okay okay what about you uh Garza, um, I don't. I don't think they would die just because they have uh, funding in the background. So trying to keep alive a Nindi with funding, I think they're gonna do okay. Uh, but they're not ever gonna grow back, or they're not. They they may not really do much more than just being like an Nindi, like a local indie fed. Uh, but, but like like Edmund said, uh, it is true they do have a, a big contracts all over the world for television. So it, it would be interesting to see how a promotion that doesn't doesn't have TV in the United States will start selling on the other countries. I don't know if that would, they would have to change like their 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 booking or their way to do things to like talk more about non US uh, events, but. Uh, yeah, I think they would continue. Like they would totally be an indie, but uh, they're they're not gonna grow. They're, and I don't even, I don't even think the name is tainted as much. But I think what uh, it's really tainted is knowing who is in the background. Like knowing this is there, knowing that what his name John Gabornik, Gabor something is back there. Like those guys are what are really tainting uh, the the promotion. That's what I think. Hmm. I think um no I I, I you know I, I I think if they're going like the way they're unfortunately any step off of TV is in a lot of people's minds going to be like well that's a step back I mean it's just like when you see uh, uh like anybody that was on TV uh, or or you even I like I remember when people on TNA would pop up at an IWC show like Samoa Joe was at a, an IWC show when he was the hottest thing in TNA, right? And and somebody commenting in the crowd beside me, man, he's really come down if he's here, right? Uh, no, that's just how they work, and they do these other shows too, you know. Uh, but for an entire promotion to kind of fall off, 
you know, TNA was in a really good spot a few years ago. On Spike TV, in prime time, had pay-per-views, had guys like Sting and Hogan. On paper, they looked great to the outside world that knew about them. There's the other problem, right? Uh, and oh, and now I'm thinking about it. I want to change my answer because my, my initial thing was going to be <laughs> the more I, I look at it, they're coming from their way down. They have a bigger fan base than most indies, and they can ride that and and turn into some sort of digital thing where they don't need as many people watching them, or it can super serve the niche that does like them, like on a YouTube or something something else or a Hulu or something like that. But then I remember that they probably barely drew 200 fans to uh, Pittsburgh, PA, with Kurt Angle on the card, and I and 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 thinking about that and how they promote and how wrestlers have said. People know, don't know we're in town, period, at the hotel across the street. Um, another promotion could do this. Ring of Honor could fall off and do this. Lucha Underground, Underground could fall off TV and do this. TNA can't. They're just not functionally capable of it, I don't think. And it's a management down thing. 